Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about the various foods that I feed my bearded dragons. Now I'm going to include a lot of clips of them eating different kinds of foods. This is not all that they eat in one week and this is not all that they've ever eaten. This is just a collection of things that they eat on the regular and if they don't eat it regularly, I will say so in the video. Just keep that in mind. I just thought it'd be really nice to show my bearded dragons eating because I have so many clips of them eating while also making it educational talking about why I feed them these things, how often I feed them these things, and how I offer them. So before we get started, I ask you to please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and away we go. So first and foremost, a few disclaimers. Number one, my bearded dragons are both well into adulthood and therefore they have an adult diet. If your bearded dragon is under a year old, its diet is going to look different. There's a thing called the 80-20 rule that you can follow for juveniles and adults. For juveniles, it would be 80% protein, 20% vegetable or plant matter. And then for adults, it would be the opposite. It would be 20% protein and 80% vegetable matter or plant matter, I mean. And so my bearded dragons eat primarily greens because they are, like I said, well into adulthood. Now I wanna give another disclaimer and that is you're seeing months worth of clips. This is not all that I would feed them in one sitting. This is not all they would eat in a week or a day. And so you're seeing multiple clips, like I said, from months. So don't think that, you know, just because you're seeing this, that it's a representation of how much they eat in one sitting or how much they eat in a week, for example. And my last disclaimer is that please do research outside of just this video to figure out what you should feed your bearded dragon. And also a lot of things are going to vary because sometimes you can't have access to a certain type of food due to where you are. And so what works for me may not work for you and that is okay. Now let's go ahead and get into it. So this is my bearded dragon Nova. She's the white one. My bearded dragon Franklin is the bug eyed, um, well, actually, let me just tell you their morphs. So she is a zero morph, and Franklin is a leatherback dunner, and that's all I know about his morph. And he has bug eyes, which, of course, just is a genetic factor. Um, but there's Franklin. So they are eating greens in this section of the video. And like I said, greens are what they eat the most of. And by greens, I mean leafy greens. Now, there's going to be a list of some that you should stay away from and some that you should only offer on occasion. I'm not going to give you that full list. I'm just going to list all of the ones that my bearded dragons eat throughout the year. My bearded dragons eat turnip greens, mustard greens, collard greens, escarole, endive, dandelion greens, bok choy, Swiss chard, and I think that that's it. That's, I think that that's like a good summation of what they get throughout their year. Of course, it's easier to get some things at different places or, or at different times of the year, but that is, in terms of their greens, what they will eat throughout the year. And my bearded dragons are great about eating their greens. They'll eat whatever green I offer them, and they really won't give me a hard time about it, which I'm really appreciative of. You'll have to forgive me if my voice sounds different or nasally. I had COVID a few weeks ago and it's just been an absolute ride, let me tell you. So if I just sound weird, I apologize, but I need to finish this video and I don't think my voice is gonna go back to normal anytime soon. So here's Franklin eating a big salad. Now I only offer these big salads a couple times a month. Um, typically it's their greens mixed with veggies like squash, carrot, bell pepper, you know, the vegetables that are safe for them, but that you don't offer on the regular, and then mix that with greens. Now, sometimes I'll give them fruit, like maybe once every couple of months, but they really don't get fruit often. And that's just because they're high in sugar and not really necessary for their diet. Now, this looks like a lot of salad, but it is a flat plate. It's not a bowl. So there's a lot of food there. They never really finish it, but I like to offer as much variety mixed with greens as possible. That way they still eat their greens instead of just eating the delicious stuff. Here is Nova eating a banana slice. Now, when I do feed them fruits, I'll offer bananas, I'll offer berries, I'll offer um, like mango or honeydew, that type of stuff. But again, it's not it's not often that I offer them fruit. If anything, um, it's just a few times a year. They do get vegetables a couple times a month though. Like I said, carrots, bell peppers, squash are some good options. But I just want to reiterate, 
that you only want to do this a few times a month. Um, certainly no more than once a week because greens should really be their staple, not all the extra bits. And now we are on to the insect portion of this video, which is my bearded dragon's favorite portion of life. They love eating dubia roaches and all the other insects that they get on occasion, but dubia roaches are their staple. So what you're seeing me offer right now are full-grown male dubia roaches from my colony. The reason I offer males is because I have an overabundance of them in my colony and they're like big enough for the beta dragons to eat without any issue. So yeah, they certainly love them. They don't care if they're boys or girls. As long as they're dubias, they're going to eat them up. Um, here's Nova. She's going to snatch it. Oh, it's so good. Anyways, so what they are dusted in is a calcium supplement. I do a rotation. So one feeding, it'll be just plain calcium. And then the next feeding, it'll be calcium plus D3 and a multivitamin. Now, I only offer insects once a week. That is the case for grown bearded dragons. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, younger bearded dragons are going to need to eat more protein because they're growing, but adult bearded dragons do not need to eat insects more than once a week. Now, letting them hunt their insects would be ideal, and so I recommend doing that if you're offering something like a superworm which can't really get away fast, but if you've ever watched how fast a grown male dubia roach moves then you know it's pretty much impossible for me to put them on the ground because they will scurry away and then i'll have to tear apart the enclosure to get them out in fact recently when i was upgrading the enclosures i found a male dubia that was just chilling in nova's enclosure underneath her wood so yeah, I really don't, you know, prefer them to run around in the enclosure and escape. Um, so that is why I'm feeding them with tongs. But I do get the comment now and again that I should be letting them free hunt. And just so you know, they are allowed to do that with other types of insects. Make sure that anytime you are offering insects to your beta dragons or any reptiles or any amphibians, any pet that you have, make sure that they are gut loaded, which is the process in which you offer nutritional food to your insects before you offer them to your beta dragon. Typically, you want to have a 24 hour window of which like you feed the insect 24 hours before you feed the insect to your beta dragon. Some of the things you can feed them are carrots, bell peppers, broccoli, squash, I mean, leafy greens, all the kind of like nutrient-rich stuff that you're going to feed your beta dragon, you're going to want to feed to your insects before you feed them to your beta dragon. That way they can get all the nutrients and also it makes the roaches quite happy because they do love all the tasty food. In terms of how much I feed them, it's going to vary from beta dragon to beta dragon. Some beta dragons have an issue with weight, and so you're going to want to feed them less. And then some need to put on some weight, so you'll need to feed them more. But for a... almost said a gecko. <laughs> for a beta dragon at a healthy, stable weight, you're going to want to offer them, or at least I offer mine, four to five dubia roaches at a time, and that is once a week. Now remember, these are full-grown male dubia roaches, so if you have like smaller roaches that you ordered from somewhere or you took from your colony, then you can offer more because they're smaller. The reason that I recommend feeding dubia roaches as a staple insect to beta dragons and to other reptiles and amphibians as well is because they are one of the better options on the market in comparison to superworms, in comparison to crickets, in comparison to mealworms and other type of insects that are offered. They just have a really good protein amount. They don't have too much fat. Their calcium to phosphorus ratio is decent. And the last thing I wanna talk about is having your own dubia roach colony. So if you don't have a colony right now, and either like you have bearded dragons and you're just buying them insects, or you're just getting a bearded dragon, I really recommend having your own colony. You might think that it's too much for just like a couple of reptiles, but you can sell off the dubia roaches that you're not using and profit from that. Um, people will always buy dubia roaches because like I said, they're one of the most popular insects out there for reptile keepers. So I do recommend having a colony and I do have a video that I'll include up here in the corner about how I like have my colony, how they're kept, what I feed them, yada yada. Um, so if you're interested in that, it's up there for you. Also, here comes this hilarious clip of Nova biting the dubia roach and the wing uh, didn't go with it, which is so gross, but she did not seem to care. <laughs> and now we're going to talk about hornworms, which are a favorite for my bearded dragons. Hornworms are big, delicious, 
calcium rich, moisture rich, green little caterpillar looking insects. They're larvae of the hawk moth. If you want to learn about hornworms, I have a whole video about like their lifespan and what they look like and where you can get them and their nutrition and yada yada while also feeding them to my reptiles. So it's a fun watch, but I'll include that up here in the corner if you're interested. Hornworms are a great, great treat for bearded dragons because they are so full of calcium, but because they are low in protein, they make a bad staple insect. And so you really shouldn't offer them like you know, as a staple. So you wouldn't swap these out for dubia roaches. Whenever I have hornworms, which is probably like once a month, I make sure that the bearded dragons get a few of them just because they love them so much. And also because when you order hornworms, they come relatively small and then they grow really fast in a few days. And so the bearded dragons are the biggest lizards I have. So whenever I have ones that get too big to feed to my Leos, they go to the bearded dragons. So they never miss out when the hornworms are delivered. Because hornworms are so filled with calcium, you don't have to dust them with calcium when you're offering them. Another type of tree insect that you can feed to your bearded dragons is a superworm. This right here is a superworm. Now, I only offer superworms a few times a year because they are high in fat in comparison to dubia roaches. And so if you're going to only offer insects to your bearded dragon once a week, you really do want to offer something that is like the healthiest option for them. And superworms are not the healthiest option, but they are okay to be offered as a treat. Now you do have to dust the superworms with calcium because their calcium to phosphorus ratio is not good. If you want to know more about that, I have a video on this channel about superworm nutrition. Oh, I love how Nova is just not giving me the tongs back. Thank you. And so I'll include that up here in the top corner. Now, because superworms are high in fat, you don't want to offer too many at one time. Just a few at a time is fine. And again, like I said, these should be offered as a treat and you should still gut load them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing my bearded dragons eat some food while learning about how I offer them those foods and why I offer them those foods and how often I offer them those foods. Uh, if you did like it, let me know by leaving a like and also by commenting down below. Also, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.